Rotem, welcome to Mexico. You are here to represent in some ways the universal music, jazz. Mm -hmm. What is for you jazz? That's a good question. Well, for me, jazz is a very uh, open uh, art form that is, of course, uh, has a lot of roots and tradition in, uh, in the American you know, tradition jazz that we think about is swing and bebop and so on, but for me it's a very uh, democratic kind of style of music that, that you can really fuse a lot of different elements and different ideas into that platform. So that's why it feels very good for me to, to create and be very free in that um, medium that we can say jazz. So it's a, it's a very open word for me. Jazz. When you speak about jazz, you think immediately in the United States, mm. in some parts of the United States. But you are not from the United States, you live there now. But you are from Israel. True. From where it came jazz to you? That's a, yeah, that's a good question. So I think when I grew up in Israel, uh, actually a friend of my brother uh, gave me a few CDs of, of jazz and I, I just heard it and I remember it felt like just the world of music. It just sounds so... I was like, I, I felt there is like a universe of, of sound and information there that I wanted to, to get into. And, and jazz was like, just, I don't know, I just wanted to explore that. So it kind of happened almost, I don't know if randomly, but I just remember hearing something, you know, like West Montgomery and Pat Metheny and John Scofield and, and Miles Davis and these kind of things. I was like, this is amazing. I have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> But I wanna, I wanna know, I wanna do that, you know. So, so that's how it happened, and and, and then um, moving to the U.S. was was very important for me because, like you were saying, uh, I mean, it's an American art form. So I was trying to get to the source of it. So I moved to New York City to study and to. to Why not to New York, New Orleans? Well, because for me, um, the jazz and and the center. It, for that music right now, I think it's New York City. All right. I mean, um, and I also went to school there, so it was a good opportunity for me just to go to the U.S. and you know, studying and being in a school and in a, in a kind of situation that is more comfortable and and exploring the city. So that was the reason I chose New York. And tell me something. Do you do you you live in Israel? You hear jazz. You play jazz. Does jazz? has something to do with klezmer music that you hear it in Israel in many ways, in many festivities so maybe that came also to put it together Well, I don't think it's connected to klezmer but I think klezmer music definitely has a lot of uh, imp improvisation, imp uh, like improvis imp sorry, improvisation elements to it so because there are definitely connections I don't think it's necessarily connected but I think for us, or for me as an Israeli musician coming from Israel and, and living in New York, you know, klezmer music, Jewish heritage, you know, Bible, uh, you know, like songs or, or like, you know, uh, religious kind of hymns or things like that that are in the Jewish culture are definitely things that are influencing me as a musician, so my music. And it's, and again, since I see jazz in a kind of open, I think it's an open way. So I, I try to figure out and, and, and um, kind of merge those elements in my music. Do you think you will get sometime a Jewish, Jewish jazz? Do I think what? Sorry? You will get or you will have sometime a Jewish jazz? <laughs> well, I mean, there are, it's interesting, I mean, there are like a few, uh, a few um, jazz musicians that are, are, uh, became very religious or there are religious, some people that used, in, that used to live in the States and moved to Israel, like Daniel Zamir, you know, so he's, you know, he's amazing, you know, he's like, he, he, he can play the traditional American jazz, just amazing, and, and after he, um, you know, got very religious and moved back to Israel, so he took a lot of influences from from Jewish nigunim and, and, and music and and, uh, and klezmer and, and fused that into you know into his music. So that's like maybe that's Jewish jazz, if you, if you will. And you, you have a trio yes. back in New York, back in Israel, with other two guys that you, that they are not coming with you now. But you are making a fusion with some jazz music from Mexico. Right. Yes. 
So, I mean, this time we're playing with uh, two, um, two Mexican musicians, amazing, amazing guys, uh, Hernan Hetch on drums and uh, Alfonso Lopez on bass. And um, yeah, it's always different where you're not playing with your trio, but they're amazing, you know, so I'm um, very happy to be, to be touring with them. How do you integ integrate with them? Because you come, you, you, you are not playing all the time with them. How do you integrate with them? Right. So well, first with Hernan, we had uh, I have a, a long relationship with him. So we we played a bunch of tours and different situations. So we know each other very well and we're very good friends. So he knows the music and and you know, and it's it's uh, it's it feels very natural. And uh, the bass player is someone that I haven't worked with yet, and I just met him recently. And he's also a great, great musician. I send him the music, and we, we spend, we did some rehearsals to go over the music. So you know, this is usually how it works in, in the world when you can't bring your band in certain situations. So you teach the music, and the musician takes some time to study the the, the music of, of your band. How do you feel? Now with this integration, Mexico, Israel, United States, let's say it. How yeah. do you feel with that? Because it's going to be, let's say, an international concert with all of that. Yeah, actually, I feel great about it. This is one of the things I love about about this form of art because you know you you travel and you meet people and you mix those different you know cultures. You know, because it's just. You know, this is the beauty of, of that music. It's so not restricted to a language or uh, any nationality. It's just music. You know, it's uh, like Bill Evans used to talk about the universal mind uh, of music, the universal language. You know, so it's like there is something very strong in music that transcends um, uh, again nationality or, or uh, different elements like that that we sometimes are very restricted about as people. That's very interesting what you're saying because we just hear from sometimes some parts of the world that Israeli musicians were try, trying to stop them to play because the boycott and everything, you know about what is now, so now somebody in other parts of the world. What do you, music it's a, like you say, it's a language for everybody, it's a universal language. How do you feel about it? This boycott, do, does you affect you some part? Somebody has told you that, no, no, you are from Israel, you cannot. It has been some parts of that. Yeah, you ever have a problem? I did, I mean, uh, it, sometimes it's tricky. Um, but for me, I mean, I, I love where I'm coming from. It's important for me that I'm from Israel and I'm, I have this heritage. But again, I see music um, as a very open thing and a very just. Uh, I try to see people as people. I mean, I don't, I don't like the separation of nationality and and religious. I mean, I, I really think we're all just people. You know, we're just people. You know, so music has that ability to transcend and and to just connect people on a very uh, intimate level, even if you don't know the person. And I think it's a very very strong tool. And I feel bad that um, some people are not allowing this musician or, or another musician because of his political views or, or um, you know, the country is coming from to play and to create because I think that's exactly the opposite than what should be but you know, we have to deal with, uh, with things. And speaking of people, you said music is about people and your music from what we have here, it's like people talking within them. Is what that what you are trying to connect, to, to promote to everybody, that are like people talking in your music, that are languages, that are stories in every song that you sing? Yeah, I mean, I really, I, I try to, in my music, I try to, to create some kind of connection. And to when I'm playing with the trio, I, I hope that we have, as a band, as people, connection, you know, and that connection and, and, and intimacy within the music is something that the people, when they're listening, can relate to that and can, can then, when they're just at home or work or with their friends, they can take another second and be a little bit more tolerant and, you know, so it's something that, because we're all just, you know, we're all human beings, it doesn't matter, you know, so I, I, this is something that is very important for me and I hope it, it can somehow um, be um, transmitted, you know. Is there in your jazz something special? In what? In your jazz, jazz, in your music, something special that you try to 
explain, explain people, because you are not only playing, you are going to give some classes, some master class here, some teaching. What do you teach in that with your jazz? Well, uh, in the master class that we're doing, um, I like to think about music as a, as a language, so I really like to talk about the connection between um, music and language in the sense of how it's being constructed and for musicians how to be able to create an environment for themselves um, to learn that language quicker um, and to see different ways that we can really um, use our memory and our, our facilities that we have right now in a slightly better way. Um, if, you know, I really like thinking about um, music is constructed from small cells of information and, and if we are flexible enough with these cells of information we can create much better and the same way with language, you know, you don't need to know all the words in, in the world to um, to say what it is that you're trying to say right now. Like, I'm trying to explain something, and I'm using uh, certain phrases and a certain vocabulary, but I can just use a very limited vocabulary in order to transmit to you what I'm trying to say. You understand? Yes. So the same thing with music. So you don't need to know everything, but you need to know what you know very well, or well enough to express what it is you have to say, and hopefully you have something interesting or deep or something true and honest to, to, to the people who are around. Yes. And tell me something. You sp spoke about little cells trying to express with some words. You are going to give master classes to Mexican people here with a group of Mexican people playing with you. But what are you going to learn from them? What are you get what do you get from them from Mexico or from all or its culture? I think it's always, uh, you know, you always learn. I mean, in every situation that you're in life, you always learn. You know, it's always an interaction. It's never a monologue. This is how I see it. When you're playing with people, when you're, we're talking right now, and I, I'm learning new things, you know. So it's always uh, an interactive thing. I'm going to teach, but I'm going to also learn because, you know, the students or the colleagues will have questions or ideas or things to say that I might not think about and hopefully vice versa. So it's always just I feel there is so much uh, information everywhere. You know, each musician, doesn't matter what style of music he's playing, he has a lot of information and different things he was learning and he checked out so we can always learn from each other in every aspect. So this is something I, I really like to do, you know, when, I, like, when I'm in New York, I always ask my friends or colleagues like what are they checking out or I ask them you know I, I try to learn all the time and I think this is something important for as a musician and maybe not just maybe you will be playing next time La, Cuc La Cucaracha in jazz style maybe so. and Aban Aguila with music Mexican music <laughs> and something like that no? something else you want to say to all the people who are going to watch you who are going to see that think ah, this is an Israeli guy maybe he can teach you something this is a guy from Utah, from New York this is a guy in Mexico what do you want to tell them um, what I want to tell them I think just um, just keep listening you know keep listening to the other person or to the situation that you're in because by listening we learn so much and if we take the time to listen, to really listen to what's happening around us, it's it's a big difference. Yeah, I think you are going to make a big difference because if people hear you, if people know you, they will think different also about Israel. In Mexico and all around the world where you are playing, you are you're already been in France, you are going to go, you have been in Costa Rica, you have been in all Europe. What is the most interesting country you have been? I actually love Mexico. This is one of my favorite places. It's amazing. I mean, the people and the, the environment is very, very, very special. Enjoy it. You are going to visit many places. Enjoy them. And you will find what is most beautiful in Mexico. Their people. Thank you very much. Thank you.